Hello and welcome to WD18, the Watford Fan Channel. I'm your host, Jacob, John by Sam and Elliot for a very special video. We're delighted to welcome Watford goalkeeper Daniel Backman to the show. Dan, thank you so much for your time today, mate. I know it's a really busy schedule for you at the moment. Obviously, playing on Friday, we've got another game in the week as well. Um, but first off, how you doing, mate? You all good? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Obviously, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, it's, um, like you said, it's, it's been very busy and obviously it's another couple of busy weeks coming up, um, you know, going into the next international break, but obviously... You know, we're on a good run, so so we're enjoying it. Love it. I think the best place to kick it off, Dan, is uh, is Friday night, actually, the 2-1 win against Derby. And yeah. all, all of the lads spotted that moment in the second half. The ball was whipped in. And initially, I thought it hit the post, but he did a brilliant save. And then, I don't know if you've seen it, the Sky cameras catch you saying, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that, um, that, that, how, what, what was going through your head at that point when, when the yeah, ball was I whipped mean, in? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it was the, the whole game. I think I've watched football for a long time, but I've got to say that corners were probably one of the best I've seen in football, really? especially consistency, because you know, you see teams of corners, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten corners a game, and maybe one or two are dangerous. But their delivery was so incredibly good on every single corner that it was just every single corner was dangerous, even though they're not even a big team. But you know, um, I heard afterwards they've they've got a set piece coach and they work on it every single day in training and obviously it pays off because, um, you know, like I said, the delivery was just absolutely incredible from the first mm. to the last corner. To be fair, the last corner yeah, helped us a little bit because Kiko had it that clear <laughs> in the 95th minute. Um, but yeah, other than the last corner, they were just dangerous on every every corner. And yeah, the one on the near post, I don't really know how that's physically even possible to get it there. From <laughs> You know, you see balls going towards the far top corner, but not at the near post. You know, it's very unusual. But yeah, I mean... It was um, yeah, it wasn't easy to deal with, but obviously one I had to deal with, and um, yeah, got lucky that the the rebound obviously got cleared as well. Yeah, yeah, it was it was. I mean, that corner attack, so you said, as you mentioned, was, was mad. Um, what I wanted to talk to you first off, Daniel, just in terms of Watford, is how are you finding life at Watford at the moment? You've you played every game since the the Huddersfield win in December. Obviously, you came in for the FA Cup game at Old Trafford, did really well, and then you've gone on a run in the team with obviously Ben out injured. Um, are you, you must be delighted with the team performances and, and, and yourself so far. Yeah, I mean, obviously for me, the last 18 months, you know, haven't always been easy because, you know, you always want to play. and um, But yeah, that's football, you know, so I'm, I'm glad now, obviously, the, 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 the time has finally come that I'm, you know, that I'm playing. And um, like you say, you know, we've, we've gone on a good run and I think maybe four or five weeks ago, we were seven or eight points behind Brentford and now we're, you know, even points with them, just a couple of goals, goals different. So... Um, yeah, it, it changes quick in that league. You know, you go, you know, you win a few games in a row, and obviously teams drop points. And um, I said before a couple of times in the last few weeks, you know, we can't expect to win every game now, just as much as other teams. You know, all the other teams around us are not going to win every game. So, um, you know, if we do drop points, we just have to look forward to the next game. Obviously, look what we can do better, and um, yeah, just 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 kick on. Um, but yeah, for me personally, obviously, like I said, it's it's been a tough eighteen months, and I'm glad I'm. I'm glad it's it's going well now. It's, it must be so difficult being a backup goalkeeper, particularly with the quality of someone like Ben Foster in front of you. But I'm just wondering whether at any point you kind of not lost faith within yourself that you could kind of get into the team. But I look back on, for example, the Tramier game last year where you didn't really have an easy time in goal. But did you always kind of still have that faith within you that you could break into the side? Yeah, obviously, I always, you know, I always believed in myself. I think that's that's a big thing of being not just a footballer, but in any sports, really. You know, if you don't believe in yourself and your own ability, then it's going to be difficult to do well and to, to have success. So, you know, that's that's a that's a big part of, of sport in general to obviously have that self-belief. And, you know, you mentioned the Tranmere game, um, especially the home game, obviously. It was, it was a tough game um, where I actually thought I played really well until, until I think it was the 3-2 it was. Um, but yeah, I mean, these, these things happen in football, you know, everybody makes mistakes, you know, it's, it just happens, you know, we're, we're not perfect and um, it's just how, how you deal with them and, uh, and like, like you said, obviously, it's, it's, um, it, it, it would have been easy to just um, kind of, you know, lose focus a little bit and let myself go, but, um, you know, I just kept training even though it was difficult and, you know, sometimes you don't understand decisions and, like I said, everybody always wants to play and, you just have to get on with it and, you know, just kept training every every week like like I was playing because, you know, you never know what happens and, you know, when things can happen, especially with Fozzie, the age is, you know, something can happen at any moment in the warm-up the day before training. So, I would just always, you know, try to be ready and obviously, um, yeah, a few weeks ago, I obviously got the game against United and then 
um, yeah, been in the team team ever since, and it's been going well. There have been so many games that we've mentioned for the past few weeks, and it's it's been a, just an absolute barrage of games. People talk about outfield players and fatigue and getting tired. Do, is it the same for goalkeepers? Because it can't be easy playing a game on the weekend, then playing midweek. Sometimes you even play on like the Friday rather than the Saturday. It must be endless. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the physical <laughs> part is obviously. It's a lot harder on the players, you know, because they run a lot more. They have a lot more sprints. But obviously for goalkeepers, it's mentally, you know, it is quite tiring. And even obviously I had a couple of games where I didn't have a great deal to do. But um, it's still, you know, you still got to be concentrated for 95 minutes, even though, you you know, you don't have much to do. You know, remember the Barnsley game, I don't think I really touched the ball very much. And then all of a sudden, Sir Alta heads it towards his own goal. So <laughs> it, 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 yeah, As he apologised like that, Dan. Yeah, you, you can't, you can't <laughs> stop, so. Um, mentally, obviously, it's difficult. And to be honest, the first two, three games, four games even, maybe even five, um, I, I did feel my leg quite a bit because, obviously, like I said, I didn't play for about 18 months. And then, obviously, going into, you know, games in such short space of time as well, you know, playing every three days. Um, it does take a toll on its body, but, you know, to me personally, I'm fine as a goalkeeper. Like I said, it's a bit easier. Um, but for the players, it is a big, um, it's a big, big ask, and um, you know it shows how how fit everyone is. How how good has uh, Sierra Alta been of late, though? Just as a goalkeeper, what's it like having? Yeah. I mean, our defence this season. I mean, we we I don't know if uh, we've mentioned your clean sheets yet, but having a defence in front of you like that just must be so good with the way Kiko's been playing and Trusta Kong and Sierra Alta and Messina. Yeah, I mean, obviously Sierra. I think he came into the team a similar time time than me, maybe a game earlier or so. Mm. Um, but when he came in the summer, it, I always liked him in training. You could always see that he's very physical and very aggressive. And then obviously when he got his chance, I think maybe it was Swansea game or maybe the Norwich game was the first Norwich, one he yes. played. I can't remember. Um, and obviously he's been fantastic since then. You know, obviously um, he's just an absolute animal in the air. He wins every <laughs> challenge and he doesn't hold back. And, you know, it's completely different to how he is off the pitch. You know, he's very quiet and very reserved and and calm and uh, but yeah he's been absolutely brilliant and obviously you mentioned Will and um, Craig Cathcart as well you know the last couple of games it's um, I think um, we've yeah, we've got a, a very good team you know if you, if you just go through the depth we have as well you know um, at the back now you know obviously with Kaba coming back as well you know the, the centre backs we have is just incredible really you know it's um, it's good to have and uh, yeah we're definitely in good hands there. Dan, you mentioned the uh, the back line there, and we got a little bit of an insight into you in goal with the uh, the goalkeeper cam. I don't know whether you saw it for the the six 0 win against Bristol City. Yeah. First off, did you like that when you watched it back? And number two, I'm going to be honest, mate, you were quite scary. Some of the shouting was scary. Yeah, <laughs> the, I mean, deepest, the deepest. You've got the deepest voice out of any Watford player I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but yeah, but you know why that is because like, the, to, if you watch the first twenty minutes or so, it's quite normal my voice, and then my voice probably about half time or maybe just after half time, it always breaks a little bit. So I have to go really deep. Otherwise it sounds like, you know, I just completely lose my voice. So, but yeah, I've, I've always been a really loud goalkeeper, you know, I just try like to, you know, even when the ball's not really near our goal, I just like to keep the defenders on their toes, you know, because if you switch off for a second, you know, it can be that yard or two yards that you lose on, on your striker. So I just like to always have them, you know, ready. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll always, I'll always shout a lot and, you know, coming back to your question, if I like watching it, it's, it's all right. You know, it's, it's, um, some things are a bit cringy. You think, oh, what are you doing there? So there, was, but there, there was this one where, where I ran back into the goal and um, when I first saw, because I didn't know that the camera was there until I saw it, I think it was the 3-0 or 4-0 even. I looked into the camera and went, oh, that's nice. And that's when I watched it. I was like, oh, God, what are you doing? Um, but yeah, it was, um, it, it, was quite, it was quite a fun watch. I thought, obviously, like you said, you know, my voice sounds quite funny and breaks every now and then. Um, but yeah, that's just, that's just my game. You know, I can't really turn that on or off. You know, that just happens in the game. And, um, it's just, obviously, there's a lot of emotions. And obviously, we, you know, we do feel a lot of pressure, which is, you need that, obviously, to, to, to perform and, um, but the situation we're in, you know, where we want to get back to, you know, we, we know we need to perform and we know we need to score goals. So, obviously, when we do score goals and like the game against Bristol, you know, when one after the, other, after the other goes in, it's just the emotion just, you know, goes in your body and the adrenaline. So, that's just kind of the reaction, you know, that just comes out. So, um, yeah, that's that's it. As a goalkeeper, Dan, what is the difference playing with and without fans? I know it's been talked about a lot since since lockdown, but... 
with you communicating with your backline, does it make it easier or do you prefer having the fact, um, in terms of just the communication aspect of goalkeeping? I mean, obviously, that? generally, you know, we all prefer to have the fans there. You know, it's just mm. a different, it's just a different atmosphere, obviously. But in terms of communicating, of course, it makes it easier. You know, if you don't have 30, 25, 50,000, however many people that are there, you know, it's easier to, to talk to each other, you know, because it's just clear there's, there's no background noise other than Preston away, which was a bit weird. <laughs> uh, was that like, by the way? Pardon? What was Preston like with the with the blasting the noise? For I didn't like it because it wasn't even crowd noise. It, it was really? just it, it was a bit like you know when you're trying to go to sleep and down the road there's like road noise or something. <laughs> and you're like, it's annoying you. That's what it was. Like. That's what that's what it was like a little bit to be honest with you because you couldn't really hear any. You know it wasn't like you could hear the fans sing or anything. It was just really strange. But mm. um, yeah, I mean it was different. You know it's um, just a bit of noise, but. Yeah, in general, it is easier to talk to the defenders or just in general the, the players to talk to each other when there's no noise um, because, you know, you can you can hear more. Sometimes when there's 60, 70, 80,000 people, you know, you can't even hear yourself. Um, so it does it does make it easier, but obviously, you know, we, we all want the fans back, you know, there's mm. nothing bad in that. I mean, we know how good our pitch is at Vicarage Road and it's fair to say some of the other pitches aren't great. Is that yeah. difficult as a goalkeeper kind of adapting to other pitches? Yeah, I mean, like you said, obviously our pitch at home is just absolutely ridiculous. I think it's better yeah. than a lot of Premier League clubs. You know, if you watch the games on TV, it's just it's ridiculous how good our pitch is. It's like a carpet. So fair play to to Scott and the groundsman. It's really, really good. And um, <laughs> it does make it difficult. Obviously, Millwall away was really, really tough because it rained a lot before the game. So the pitch wasn't just, you know, there wasn't just no grass on it, but it was just really muddy and, you know, like really like, soggy and everything. It was It was difficult to play on. Um, Coventry away was was really really tough, um, and then obviously Preston as well. Preston was a bit of a strange one because it was quite warm all day and it didn't really rain, and then it started raining really when we left the hotel on the way to the stadium. For about twenty five thirty minutes, it was raining, and as we got to the stadium, the pitch was absolutely soaked. Like there was puddles almost going up to my ankles, and I thought <laughs> that's really really strange. And we were all a bit worried because if it kept raining until the game started, and I think we would have struggled to to kick that game off because there was just so many puddles on the pitch. And thankfully, it stopped. I think an hour before the game, and they just cleared it off. And it was it was actually all right in the end. You know, it uh, it's not you know like playing at home. It does make it more difficult, and obviously. It is an advantage for teams like Preston that play the way they do, you know, direct and they don't really have the ball on the floor. Um, but, you know, we, we've got good enough footballers to obviously get past that. And also, you know, we got to make the right decisions. Sometimes we have to be a bit more direct and sometimes it might not look nice from the outside. But that league is very, very tough. And, mm. you know, you don't want to take any risks that you don't have to, especially on, on pitches like like Preston, Millwall, Coventry or wherever it was. Who did you sit with on the bus? Yeah, so we've got bus. Uh, our bus has um, its seats of four. So, you know, two facing forwards and two facing backwards with a little table in the middle. Um, <laughs> so we've got like two tables next to each other. Obviously, there's eight people sitting there, which is um, me. And then Ben Wilmot is next to me facing the right way facing forward opposite us is Adam Parks he sits opposite Wilma and then opposite me is Fozzie and um, when he's there now it's um, Rob Elliott um, and then on the other side on the table next to uh, next to me is um, Will Hughes Tom Cleverley um, <laughs> do you play Troy countdown with Clebs? countdown with Clebs. Uh, <laughs> I don't know my is good enough for that uh, Troy and Craig Kafka. We we actually we do actually play a game every time we're on the bus. Sometimes for two three hours at a time. It's called Stickman Golf. I don't know. If you know oh, that. we love it. We love oh, Stickman no. Golf. Yeah, it's um, that's what we play constantly on the bus. So um, yeah, that that you know makes the time pass a bit quicker. Who's on chains, Dan? Are you on chains? To be fair, I'm sometimes. Obviously, I think if Troy's there, it's Troy. Um, he's got he's got the tunes on when he's there. Andre sometimes and then me sometimes, yeah. I was, I was going to ask you about going back to the the way Watford play. Of course, is a lot of it is now the passing play. It's it's quite entertaining to watch, particularly with the change to the four three three as well. Yeah, is that how you like to play? Because you're you're very good with your feet. You're you're very you know it's sort of the new thing for goalkeepers to yeah. To play obviously, you know if we we all like to play football. You know, it's not you know the most enjoyable type of game if you just kick the ball forward and kind of hope for the best. But sometimes that's what we have to do, you know, because um, as well with the speed we have up front, sometimes we got to take advantage if it's 2v2, 3v3 at the back that we kind of 
you know, force them, you know, to, to win the headers and obviously also win the second balls because if it's that, like I said, if it's 2v2, 3v3 and we get a break, you know, I mean, I don't know, if, obviously you, you will have seen the first goal on Friday. I think Isma started about 15 yards behind the defender and got to the ball first. So, <laughs> so fast, so um, fast. But yeah, you know, you just got to adapt to obviously the pitch and the conditions and how the game's going as well. You know, we can't, like I said, we can't always play the perfect football and, you know, we're not always going to win 6-0 like we did against um, against Bristol. Um, but yeah, generally we like to play out from the back. We like to play football. I personally quite like it to get pressed by the striker as well as the centre-backs get impressed because then that opens up a lot of space for the full-backs for me to clip in. So um, that's that's how, how, I, how we like to play and how we also try to play. You know, that's our style of play. And um, I think we're doing pretty well at the moment as well as the dirty side. Like I said, you know, sometimes you just got to get rid of the ball and go along and, um, you know, play in their half. I was going to mention, Dan, sorry, sorry, Elliot. I was going to mention, Dan, about just trading and a bit of insight into that because I've noticed from you, your distribution's really, really good and you're constantly looking to fizz it out to the, to the two fullbacks, Kiko and Messina, really do stretch, stretch yeah. it out wide. Um, do you focus a lot of your training on distribution and kicking or is it something that's just, just a part of the normal, normal training yeah, it's, it's, um, schedule? Yeah, it's part of training, obviously. You know, you do after training every now and then, maybe once a week or so, depending, like I said, at the moment, there's so many games that you don't really want to do too much kicking away from the games because your legs are already half hanging off. <laughs> Shattered. So you don't want to do too much. But yeah, normally, you know, you do five minutes every now and then after training, just clip balls to the goalie coach or with the other goalies out, you know, as the fullback and a few long balls and, um, yeah, it's just thing that 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 is involved in training in general. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say about how you said you, you like having the strikers pressure you. Um, is that a bit of an adrenaline rush when you've got the players rushing towards you and you've got to, you know, sometimes you see little Cruyff turns from, from goalkeepers, you see little clips. Is that something? Yeah, you enjoy I mean, when I'm, I'm, I'm not running? really a Cruyff turn kind of guy. So I think if I don't have to take the risk, I don't want to. You know, and if, if if I have to, I'll just kick it, you know, out for a throw in. You know, I'd rather have the ball away than get tangled up in the middle of the box but it just makes it easier it's less the adrenaline rush it's more that it gives the defenders and the midfielders or whoever more space to play you know obviously if the strikers are closer to me they're further away from you know the from the other goal and from from our fullbacks and wingers and midfielders so that's that's more that's more the reason why I, why I like players to press me yeah. going you know right back to the start of your career just as a child growing up in Austria were you always a goalkeeper? Did you always want to be a goalkeeper? Because you always hear these stories of like goalkeepers that started off as like strikers and wingers and then ended up in goal. Yeah, I, I started off as a striker. I actually <laughs> went to a, to a Bundesliga club in Austria as a striker in the under eleven. So um, yeah, because it was more because I was you know I was quite tall when I was young and uh, obviously scored a lot of goals because of that. And um, yeah, and then we went to a tournament um, and obviously at that you know age group you only have one goalie generally. Um, and it was like a two day two day tournament, and uh, the goalie got injured after the fir- in the hotel. He smashed his toe on the door, and um, so obviously he couldn't play the next day. So we needed a goalie. So I went in goal, and that's how I stayed in goal really. And um, from I think under the 11s, under 12. So, so yeah. stub toe, yeah. a stub toe kicked it all off. Started <laughs> yeah, everything. Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> that's that's nice. class. I was going to say, Dan, you mentioned you mentioned growing up in Austria and stuff, and you, you came to Watford in 2017 from, from Stoke after what six seasons there, I believe. Yeah, um, yeah. When you came in, I think the only other Austrian player was was it Sebastian Prodo, I think, yeah. at the time. Was he quite important integrating into the squad, having someone who was from Austria as well? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I knew him before um, okay. from the, through the national team. You know, we've, I've, I've been in the squad a couple of times with the national team before I signed for Watford. So obviously I met him there and he was actually the first one that came up to me and said, you know, that Watford are interested in you. Um, that was obviously before before I signed. But yeah, it obviously does help if you have someone um, from the same country with the same language. Obviously there was also um, Jose Holibas, you know, who spoke German, um, which obviously it does, it, do, it does help. You know, it's, I mean, I was quite lucky because my English was quite good because I've been here for so long and my, my wife's also English. So my English was, you know, already you know, good anyway when I came to Watford. But it does help when you have someone that you know already and speaks your language. It just gives you a bit of a home comfort kind of thing. Mm. And just just adding to that, Dan, in terms of since you've been at the club, I know you've, you've, you've been out on this kind of like the first period where you've been sustained at number one at Watford and you've been out on loan to Kilmarnock. Um, who have been the big influences on you during your time at the club? Obviously, you've worked with some top goalies in, in Foster and Gobez. We've got yeah. Dalberg out on loan at the moment as well. He's obviously really talented. Is there any particular players that have been a big influence on you or have really helped you settle into the, into the club? 
Yeah, I mean, the, the best, my best friend at the club um, would have been Daryl Yamad. Me and you know, me and him, we, we were really close, and and our families as well, and we were neighbours when he was still here. So that was obviously um, that was really nice, you know, to have someone away from football a little bit as well, because it's not it's not very usual or it's not too often that you spend too much time away from football with your teammates, because obviously you see each other twenty four seven anyway, you know. So you know, we all, we've all got our families, but obviously he was the one, especially since I came back from Scotland, um, who I spent the most time with. And, um, and you know, obviously from the staff-wise, uh, I really enjoyed working with the first goalie coach I had when I first signed, who was uh, Hugo Oliveira uh, and the Marco Silva. Um, <clears throat> he, was, he was really good to work with. And um, obviously Stacky as well, you know, he's, um, he's been great when, when, he was, when he was with us. So, um, um, yeah, and, uh, to be honest, I really like uh, Antonello as well, who's who's with us now. He's a really, really great guy. You know, he's a great character off the pitch as well. Everybody really likes him. You know, he's a genuinely nice guy. And um, yeah, I mean, there's 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 a lot of people obviously who I got close with. I mean, I've been here for almost four years now. Obviously, I've been on loan one, but it's still it's quite a long time, you know, to be at a football club and these days as anyway. I was just wondering though as well. Um, you know, you mentioned as well uh, having the goalkeeper coach on the Marco Silva and Stack and yeah. obviously you you've been on to quite a few managers while your your time at Watford. Do the kind of the goalkeeping sessions change quite a bit like with the different managers? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, a lot. You know, obviously every goalie coach has their own style and um you know European goalie coaches or central European goalie coaches are a lot more technical, you know, from Italy, Spain, Portugal, they're a lot more technical than um, English, for example, whereas the English, um, the English way is a lot more game related, a lot more basic. Just keep the ball out the net, pretty much. <clears throat> and obviously, you know, if you have both, you can you can take things from you know from from both ways, which is which is obviously good, you know, because the the main thing is to keep the ball out the net. But you also need the right technique to do it, so um, it works quite well to have worked with with um, with a few goalie coaches. Dan, because I wanted to ask you about your relationship. Obviously, Gomi's left the club now, and he's an absolute legend. What fans love him, and Foster's obviously another senior senior pro um, and senior goalkeeper. What what was it like working with those two guys? Like, I can't think of many two better mentors really as an upcoming keeper. But in terms of obviously, they were the number one. What was that like working with them during during your time? <coughs> yeah, obviously. You know, when I when I was growing up, Gomi was already, you know, playing for PSV at the time. <laughs> and even Fozzie, you know, he played for Watford when I was, I think, 10 years old. So that's obviously, you know, that's that's quite a, not a big thing. But obviously it does help when you have such experienced people. And you learn from them, I said a couple of times in the last few weeks, that, you know, you don't really learn that much on the pitch. It's more off the pitch, you know, the the mental side of the game, which which is obviously really important as a goalkeeper that um, that, that you can take things from and, um, and as well, it doesn't really matter who I work with. Obviously, it does help when it's a lot more experienced people, even with Rob now, with Rob Elliott. <clears throat> but even, you know, with Parksy or whoever it is, you know, there's always things that you always see some people or other goalies do things differently. And, you know, you might try it and things might work for you. And, you know, it's, um, you know, it's good to obviously have a, have a good group of people. You know, we've got, like I said, we've got Rob now and Parksy and, Obviously, Fozzie, you know, we've got some really good goalies there and um, it's uh, it's good good fun to train with them. Maybe this is slightly off topic, but as you mentioned last week in your press conference about aspirations for international duty <clears throat> and playing for Austria, you mentioned you, you've been in the squad as well. Yeah. How big is this summer to, to have the opportunity of the Euros? Um, you mentioned also last week about there is sort of like a fight for, for the number one spot uh, at Austria. So... How big would that be for you to to get the opportunity to to go to the Euros and represent? Yeah, Australia? I mean, I want to go to the Euros. You know, that's not a secret. I, I want to go there, and obviously, the 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 situation is 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 a good one as well because you know, like I said, there's no there's no number one. You know, there's I think the last five games, three different goalies played, and not everyone's playing at the club, and you know, people are playing at different levels. So. Obviously, with me now playing that regularly and you know performing pretty well, and obviously as a team we're doing well, so um, I've got a really good chance of you know making the next squad. Obviously, which starts already with the World Cup qualifiers for the year after, um, and then obviously going into the summer with the Euros. You know, I, I want to go to the Euros. You know, that's that that's yeah. it really. Um, I mean, the club is always more important, and I don't really know yet how it's going to work. You know, if I'm called up in March with. With the traveling, I don't really know how that's gonna how that's gonna affect it or not. But obviously, the the club's a lot more important. You know, the club is 
you know, we need to take the club back to the Premier League. So everything else comes after that. But ultimately, I want to go to the Euros in the summer. It feels like this opportunity for you to get a run in the side is almost... Obviously, you probably would have liked it to come a bit earlier, but it just—it feels like it's come at the perfect time now, ahead of the Euros. Does it feel like that for you? Like it's kind of yeah, coming I mean, into place a little bit? I didn't really think about it that way, but yeah, obviously with the Euros getting pushed back a year, me personally, it, it did it did me a little favour, you know, because obviously I wasn't playing last year. I am playing now, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I think yeah, I played every game. I, mean, I think so anyway in twenty twenty one for us now. So obviously that's a great start to the year and great start to the year. Obviously with with um, um, with the Euros, so um, yeah, it's just um, obviously I'm really enjoying it at the moment. Um, obviously, you know when you're playing and playing well, and the team are doing well, it's always you know it's it's always nice. And um, but yeah, I've been waiting long enough for it. And obviously, working working very hard for it. So I'm glad it's finally paid off. And just just another one before. Sorry, Sam. Just before we cross over to you, it do do goalkeepers set? Um, so obviously, you here with strikers, they say we want to get a certain amount of goals this season. Do goalkeepers set? Like so, from from now to the end of the season, have you got in your mind how many clean sheets you want to keep, or 15. is there a certain goals? Fifteen from now on. <laughs> but that, that's obviously, you know, I go I go into a game wanting to keep a clean sheet. You know, yes, yeah. that's, that's what I want to do. And like I said, I want to keep fifteen clean sheets in the next fifteen <laughs> games. But that's not going to happen. You know, it's not always we're not always going to keep clean sheets. And um, you know, like you see on on Friday, how quick it goes. You know, with the, just one piece of quality from an unbelievable delivery and you can't really defend it you know once the ball was in the air there's not much all three of us could have done because the ball was such a great ball and obviously Kasim Ridge has made it really difficult with running at the near post because if he's not there the ball is not that great but obviously he made it was just a, a goal where sometimes you there's not much you can do so um yeah obviously you know like I said I go into every game wanting to keep a clean sheet um that's you know that's that's for what I'm here to do you know to to keep the ball out the net but like I said it's um it's not going to happen every game and um uh, I think we've we've got a pretty decent record now over the last 10 games or so so we just um yeah have to you know be solid at the back again and you know we we're defending really well whether it's from set pieces long balls so just have to continue to do that and then I'm sure we'll keep more clean sheets. I'm I'm just wondering myself as a you know I'm I'm a young goalkeeper um just play Sunday league really um yeah. Like, what advice, like, generally, it's a bit of a cliche question, but yeah. what advice would you have for, like, a young goalkeeper kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a really tough question to answer because, obviously, the main thing in football is to enjoy what you do, you know, because if you don't enjoy it, then it's tough to do that every day, you know. I mean, it's pretty much the same with every job, but, um, obviously, if you don't enjoy what you do, then it then it's tough. But, you know, the, the best advice to give is just, when you go into training, always try to get better, you know, always use everything and, you know, don't, you know, you'll have your off day and whatever, but always try to improve things and always, you know, go into training thinking, yeah, you're going to, you know, you're going to improve things rather than just letting it pass by the hour or hour and a half or whatever you're training. Just always try and get something out of it, whether it's, I don't know, just the, the smallest thing possible, but it's better than nothing. So always try to get something out of it. And um, yeah, that's it, really. I'm just wondering as well, on the topic of training, have you ever tried to save a Troy D penalty in training? <laughs> Yeah, but not one down the middle. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, Is he allowed to, think... Dad? Pardon? Is he allowed to put them down the middle? <laughs> in honest, training. He, doesn't really do that. he doesn't really do that in training. Um, in training, but when I wasn't playing, we always he just told me where he's going, you know, what corner he's going, or he's going high or low, and that pretty much, you know, over-exaggerated and went early, you know, to kind of replicate or kind of make it a bit harder for him. So he's got that cushion in the game, but we never really went down the middle. And to be honest with you, I don't want to, so... <laughs> do you feel sorry for the keepers at the other end when they're having to stand up to one of those <laughs> yeah I mean it's it's really really tough because if you're standing still it's so tough uh, the last couple of pens he took with against, I think against Stoke mm. uh, not against Stoke against um, anyway I can't remember who it was I think it might have been QPR where he went to either side a little bit and um, one of the goalies actually stepped just half a step or so to the side which obviously makes it a lot easier because your body's moving and your muscles are tense. Whereas if you're standing still, it's almost impossible. It needs to hit you on the chest or in your head or whatever. So it's um, it's it's really really tough to say. Mm. And, and, yeah, and just and just and just before we get into some um, uh, yeah. quick sorry, oh, sorry, oh, so much right. just running. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh legend. Say hi, Chase. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <love that>. oh, <laughs> bless. 
<laughs> oh, well, legend. Uh, 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 on the topic of um, on goalkeeping, Dan, and this is like yeah. such a random one, but do you have any pre-match rituals, any superstitions that are quite weird? Not at all. I'm I'm pretty relaxed before a game. It's um, not really, to be honest. I'm just trying to think if there was anything, but <clears throat> there isn't really anything that I do the same every time or something I have to do. And if I don't do it, I feel like, oh my God, I've not done that. Not at all. You know, I just go on the bus, probably play, play a bit of stickman on the way to the stadium <laughs> with the boys. You know, just kind of not think about the game really, you know, then... Um, you know, people lose their heads a little bit when they're losing. Um, <laughs> it's quite uh, do, you, do, you, do you play a lot of golf, Dan? By the way, because I'm not stalking, yeah. I'm not stalking you here, Dan. But I follow the PGA and the European Tour on Insta, and I always see you liking the posts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, I do. I watch them. I mean, I stayed up last night till twelve o'clock watching the whole tour, like the 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 whole um, last round of the of the Genesis Invitational. Obviously, I, I really enjoy watching it. Obviously, I like playing it as well. I'm not very good. Um, I don't really have, come, mate. <laughs> I don't really have that much time, but yeah, I do really enjoy. Uh, do really enjoy playing. Um, but yeah, coming back to the ritual thing, it's I don't have anything at all. Just get off the bus, go in the dressing room, go on the pitch for a couple of minutes, just sit in the changing room for a little bit. You know, we're there quite early always, so we've got a lot of time to kill and get a bit of treatment and get changed and go outside and do what we have to do i want to hear more about your dog now like do you take him out do you do you, do you walk him every day um he's, he's only he... 11 weeks old so oh. <laughs> yeah, was it a lot was it a lot, was it a lot yeah, weeks ago, so he's really really small um, what, sort of, what sort of dog is he it's a whippet it's very unusual it's not very common yeah, though it's like it's like a, a, really a, a smaller common, greyhound yeah <laughs> oh, i love um, that that so, is quality um, so yeah it's um <laughs> Yeah, we got him three weeks ago, so he's um, like another baby. I'll tell you what, Dan, just, just to wrap up, because we, we've taken up so much of your time. We really do appreciate it, mate. We've got, we've got 10 quick fire questions, right? I'm going to fire them over to you. Um, some may be harder than others, but we'll see, we'll see how you get on. Okay, first uh-huh. one is 3 p.m. kickoff or a game under the lights? 3 p.m. kickoff. Oh, Foster or Joe, mate? That. Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's that's a cheeky one. Man. That was I, I, when I wrote it down. I thought this is bold. This is bold. That's <laughs> really really difficult. I mean, obviously, I knew Gomi first because when I was growing up, I think Gomi was a bit bigger than Fozzie at the time, especially in Central Europe. You know, because um, Gomi was just better known in in Central Europe than than Fozzie was. So from that point, I would go with Gomi. But that's a tough one to answer. That's that's that really hard. Tough. Was, that yeah. is really tough. I think if I asked the lads, we probably couldn't decide either. Both no, that's yeah, a tough that's one, that. Um, next one. We've seen a couple of the initiations. What's your go-to karaoke song? If you had to, if you had to, we're not going to make you sing, L- Dan. Don't worry. L- lose yourself, Eminem. <laughs> oh, big, big. Who is who, uh, who is the loudest in the dressing room? Like when you're swinging, when you're singing "Sweet Caroline" after the game, who's the loudest? Yeah, but "Sweet Caroline" it has to be someone English because the rest of the lads don't even know the song. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, no, that, no. That's a, that's that's not really one to 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 say who's the loudest because neither of the English lads are, are the loudest really. The, the loudest in the dressing room, João Pedro has the loudest laugh. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, João and Dom Kina, his laugh. Oh my god. It goes through, yeah. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, the loudest in the dressing room. Um, maybe after the game, it could be me when we win. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's there's a few good characters. Um, yeah, let's go to the next one because it's difficult next to answer that for our 25 players. <laughs> Austrian or English food, Dan? Austrian. That's Austrian. not even. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what. This is, I think this is a good one. If you had to go out for dinner with one Watford teammate in the current squad, who would it be? Um, and why? <laughs> like the first one comes to I would say Will Kong because um, we have the kids the same age and we're, we're the same age or, or similar age. So um, that's the first one that comes to end. Good shout. Uh, next one is win the World Cup with Austria or Champions League with Watford. <laughs> he didn't like that one. Oh, God. <laughs> oh mate, I've, yeah, I've, these are tough, aren't they? They're tough. I would say the World Cup with Austria because for us to qualify for the Champions League, I think that's already an incredible achievement. So good answer. The World Cup with Austria, top man. Um, 
tell us something about you that we don't already know. You, I, no, I'm really good at skiing. You might not. Really? You might, I might already know that, but that's the most that I tend to like, though. Quali. Yeah, obviously, I grew up with it, so, yeah. Nice. What, so what's your favourite thing to do away from football? Is it golf? Yeah, probably, other than spending time with my family, I would, you know, I'd probably say play golf um, when I have the time. Um, but yeah, it, take, it just takes up a lot of time, you know, and obviously with my kids and my wife at home, you know, when I'm not at football, I want to spend time with them. So I've, I can't really go out, you know, twice a week and, you know, lose another eight hours there, you know. So um, I like to play when I have the time, but obviously I have to pick the pick the right time. And uh, But to be fair, I, I read earlier this morning that the golf courses are opening again on the 8th of March. So I'm really looking forward to that. Elliot, you were in the press conference, weren't you, the other day with Dan? And it was a really nice moment about, I think, Dan, your reaction was so wholesome when um, mm -hmm. the journalists asked the question about seeing your son at the Cridge, um, seeing you play yeah. at the Cridge Road. I mean, yeah. that is, that's something you just probably can't wait. To yeah, I mean, it's it's obviously, me. he's, um, my son's three and a bit now, and um, and my daughter, she's two in, in 10 days, or in, in two weeks today, actually, I think. Um, so, um, obviously, they're at an age now where they realise, you know, what's going on, kind of. My daughter, maybe not so much, but obviously, my son, um, my son does now, and, um, and uh, my wife and my son, they, they came to a couple of games in Scotland. Um, but obviously, my son was too small then, and my wife couldn't come very often as well because she was pregnant with my daughter at the time. So, um, yeah, my wife's maybe seen me play live three, four times, and my son once when he was one. Oh. Um, so, obviously, you know, I'm really looking forward to, to that. And, um, yeah, that would be, that'll be really nice, you know, if maybe I can take him on the pitch after one game or something. So, um, that would be brilliant. Uh, be I'm brilliant. looking forward to that. In the Premier League, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. Fingers crossed. Two more, Dan. Or, or maybe, I don't know how, how, what Boris is going to say tonight. Possibly, you know, the game that, yeah. you know, brings okay. us promotion and people are back in the stadium. That would be, that would be amazing. <laughs> We've got two more, Dan. Um, this would be an interesting one. Who's the best trainer at the club, in your opinion? Best trainer at the club? Um, the first one that came to my mind then was Maps, but obviously he's not there anymore. Um, but he was he was just an outstanding professional. People like Isma, who's played pretty much every minute this season, and I don't think he's missed the training either. You know, it's it's just that these are the kind of players we have, which obviously is really good for the squad. You know, there's no, um, you know, no no letdowns in a way because obviously you, you get people that kind of sack training off a little bit sometimes, mm -hmm. and we don't have that at all. So it's hard to to pick one player. But like I said, the first one that came to mind was Maps because he just just outstanding in everything he did um, mm. but right now I just think we're a really really good group of people with everybody pulling it the right direction and um, yeah that's what we need in the next 15 games great answer and to wrap up Dan there was um, <clears throat> there was a question on Hive Live at the weekend um, or it might have been the game before about I think it was Alec Chamberlain and Ben Foster in the studio and the question was the goalkeepers prefer part of the goalkeepers union a nil-nil where you produce you produce a great great game or a five-four win, which one are you going for? A nil-nil or a five-four win? Yeah, but you've had a brilliant game. You've had a you've had an absolute worldie in the nil-nil or the five-four, where you've probably had an average game, but you won the game. I mean, this, is this clean sheet? No, we have to take the win because obviously we're a team sport. We want to win games, <laughs> so Check. definitely take the five-four win. Um, because obviously, the, you know, we have to win games. We want to win games. That's why we play football. Um, the clean sheet is just obviously. A bonus for us, you know, if we keep a clean sheet. But I'd definitely take the take the win over over a draw, you know, whatever the score is in a draw. I think um, Alec Chamberlain said a nil-nil, to be fair. Nah, I think, I think I, he posted it as well. Nah, I, 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 I don't think so, because <laughs> yeah, every, everyone's different. But I'd rather win a game than draw a game, no matter how well I play. Because, you know, three points or, or one point is a big difference. I mean, right now... You know, on Wednesday, for example, I'd take a 7-6 over a nil-nil any day of the week. Love that. Because it's three I'd points. I'd enjoy a 7-6. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> great dude. As long as the last I'd 10 probably, minutes. I'd probably enjoy a nil-nil more, you know, if I'm having an absolute world and save a penalty and, you know, have three unbelievable saves. Like, inside, you'd probably enjoy it a bit more. But after the game you'd wish you'd won the game so true yeah true. Dan I'm, so, I'm, just, I'm just wondering as well with the you know I, I don't know if you heard the last 10 minutes of the game the other day when uh, when uh, True scored the own goal unfortunately 
we were all so we were like hiding behind our sofas. We couldn't watch. It was so scary. Is it like yeah. that as a goalkeeper as well? Were you, were you nervous or were you just focusing ahead of? No, you, you're not here? really. You're not really nervous. Obviously, you know when they scored. I think it was 77th minute or something like that. You, you know what's coming. You know what's going to happen. Yeah, um, they're just going to lash balls forward, put balls in the box. And we knew already before the game how good they are on set pieces, and they obviously proved it from the first one until the until the second to last one, as I mentioned before. But they were just dangerous from every single set piece. Um, so we knew what was coming. We knew they're going to put balls in the box. They knew they were going to hope to get corners, and I think they had three corners in the last minute as well. So we've done really, really well to to defend it and get the ball away, and because that's what all that matters. It didn't matter how it looked. It was just about not letting the ball go in the net. Um, Obviously, I think we had a couple more chances as well, or half chances after they scored to put the game to bed. But you know, it's um, sometimes these wins are even better than you know when you win six 0 because you have to dig deep. Everybody has to work together. You have to shout with each other, get, keep each other going, and just um, just hang on in there. You know, and that's that's how you win leagues. You know, you don't win leagues by because you're not going to win six 0 every week. It's the games that you just win or the Preston away game. You know where. You know, you hang in the last five minutes, they're throwing everything at you and you just, um, you know, keep the clean sheet on, on Tuesday how it was and, you know, defend as a team and um, that's that's the big wins in the end. Great stuff, Dan. I think that's probably a brilliant place to wrap it up. Uh, thank you so much for your time, mate. Uh, we really no do worries. appreciate it. I know you're so busy at the moment, but really no do worries. appreciate it. And uh, on behalf of all Watford fans, we wish you the, the best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank you and very much. Hopefully we'll catch up again when, when you're a Premier League player. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> Top man. Take care of yourself, mate. Right, see you soon. Guys. Bye, see you later, Dan. Take bye. care. Bye bye.